What do you think of Verizon? Hmm? What do you think of Verizon? Yeah, she does. Yeah, my girlfriend's actually doing uh, editing for her YouTube channel. I'm just watching Ryzen builds. So Ryzen seems to be the popular topic that's trending like crazy right now. And I just wanted to give a little, I guess, talk about my opinion about Ryzen. Um, so I've been looking at a lot of benchmarks, um, a lot of obviously people doing um, uh, reviews, builds with Ryzen, and if it's basically living up to its hype. Um, from what I can see, to be honest, I would want to sell, sell, sell my, I'm running it basically in i7 um, 6700K and I got this in December-ish for Micro Center. Um, it runs well, it runs really great. It's just, I guess the 8 cores and 16 threads would basically benefit me much more since um, my girlfriend and I do content creation. Um, YouTube videos. Uh, I'm trying to get into Adobe After Effects, but that's gonna take some time. Right now, um, many of you are like, oh, is it worth it? Should I get it? Depending on what system you're running right now. Like, I have no reason to upgrade. I really don't. I have a great system. I, I just want Ryzen because it's like, it helps with production. And then it'll future proof my PC in the sense of um, being able to edit 4K. Once it comes out, a lot of the, um, I do want a 4K monitor and I'm probably gonna obviously game in that just like me. I'm not a serious gamer or anything, but it's very beneficial for those who want more performance in the aspect of video editing, content creation, and that. For gaming, from what I've noticed, for some reason, um, 1080p for it, it hasn't been doing too well, but for 1440 and, and 4K, doing very well I guess that's basically the eight cores that's just pumping it up um, so again should you buy Ryzen should you not it depends on what you're running right now how old your system is and honestly it's the best bang for the buck especially if you want to get the um, 1700 versus the 1800x if you overclock the 1700 up it will perform and outperform it will outperform the 1800x um, with that being said, what else did I have in mind? Uh, I just saw the reason why they haven't, well, most, like, for example, uh, NZXT, uh, Corsair, and then EVGA, their liquid coolers. Uh, many of you have been waiting for them to send out the brackets. The main reason why it has not been shipped is because basically they didn't anticipate, um, I'll probably link the video in the description. Um, they didn't anticipate a few things and a lot of people cannot fit the cooler that they want to fit into the AMD socket. The good thing about Asus, well that's the overpriced top of the line, the Asus Rogue, the freaking $250 motherboard, um, which is probably, I'll pull it up while I talk to you, is the smartest choice that Asus did when making that motherboard. To be honest, I like Gigabyte a lot. Um, Great customer support, great customer service. Um, I've talked to the guy multiple times. He helped me build my PC, um, and I just prefer it. But uh, NZXT and the other brands, because I have a Kraken X62 that I'm gonna get. It's coming in the mail. Um, that basically would not support it. So even if I want it right, then I can't do anything with it right now. Any other issues that are really useful? Just below that, you have the three something mount. Basically, include or you can download 3D printable files that allow you to do stuff like uh, 24 pin covers and stuff like that. You can get also 3D print them or get some more shape ways to make it for you. Uh, so, that's the motherboard basically. Um, or just $250, of course, it would be expensive. Um, Tech Team GB, he actually shows a couple of videos too of why to choose the 1700 over the 1800 and he produces the benchmark. So, look him up. Honestly, like. The fact that you can overclock a CPU to outperform its top of the line, 1800X, like, saves you a lot of money, to be honest. And you can put that money into a good motherboard that can allow you to overclock it to that potential. Um, that one, basically, 
the gist of it is that it supports both AM3 and AM4 slots the way they designed the board which is really smart of Asus to do so that's why a lot of people are really buying that board because they want to get it and get their Ryzen system and put it in and build it now so I definitely would recommend that uh, I'm not sure if the Prime does it I'm still doing research and looking to see if the Prime allows you to um, basically have the same design as um, the Asus the, oh, the Asus Asus Corsair um, Hero, Rogue Hero, whatever, you will you see it. But, um, yeah, if it does, I'd recommend that board. But as of right now, I haven't found anything. I've been trying to look at reviews, trying to look at that motherboard to see if it is compatible with the AM3 um, socket as well. So that um, you can basically put your liquid cooler right now. And I'll show you right now what I'm talking about so it makes sense. Sorry, it's taking a while to load up, but basically what you can see right there is the mounting hall. AM3, AM4, AM3, AM4. You can basically toggle between the two. And the fact that um, all those major brands of liquid cooling still have not been able to basically make the back plate and are getting ready to ship it out but it should be coming out sometime um, beginning of April the first half of April is what they're saying um, like I said I'll put the article and the video in the description they are they go through it in detail so I, I rather not plus like I said they're it's their reviews I don't want to basically copy what they're saying but yes you guys would need to be patient and wait for basically the AM4 slots for any of the other motherboards such as Gigabyte, MSI, blah blah blah, ASRock. Um, let's... Okay, so with the bracket removed, what we can do is take this back off. And you can see that there are clearly two melts. Don't worry about the extra nicks taken out of there because they're on both sides. It is actually part of the design. But it does mean that it supports AM4 and AM3 brackets. I've got an AM3 bracket here. So there you have it. That's why Asus is smart in what they did in the design. So, again, um, depending on what system you have, depending on what your needs are, if you're gaming, there's no point to going to this. Honestly, if you're strictly a gamer and you really have no reason to do content creation or anything, if you're a gamer and a streamer, that's a different story. But all in all, there's no reason why you should go for it if you specifically only game. But for other people who do work, content creation, again, I stress this, and I stress this a lot, um, you just go for it. So if you're on the edge, like, should I buy it, should I not, that's all up to your needs. Um, as for um, Ryzen 5 from Salazar Studio, so I take his word for it. It pro it will not outperform Intel's i5s, which I kind of expected because for bang for the buck, it, I guess. But at the same time, like Intel's been doing great and they've always been ahead of the game. But AMD is trying to slowly creep up on them, and this is definitely a big step that they've taken. And that's pretty much it. That should answer a couple questions if you guys had. Um, if you have any comments, put in the um. Comments below, like, subscribe, um, and yeah, just let me know how the, the video was. I'm probably going to get a lot of random hate. I don't know if I am or if I'm not, but just I'll comment as much as I can. or reply to your comments as much as I can. Um, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.